From being able to skip the first gym leader all the way to being able to take on Professor Oak, these are 17 Pokemon secrets and Easter eggs in Gen 1 that you never knew about. Subscribe and let's get started. Back in Generation 1 in Red and Blue, when you exited Route 10, you could actually get to meet a picnicker called Carol. If you spoke to her, she will mention a Pokemon, a chunky Pokemon that's pink and also has a floral pattern on it. This is oddly similar to the Pokemon Muna, which was added later on in Generation 5, and this seems to have been a, a early reference to specifically that. Back in Red and Blue, there was an oversight when you were inside of gyms. If you went with a fishing rod and stood next to one of the statues, you could actually fish inside of it and catch, well, a Magikarp, so kind of a strange one. If you get your hands on a Poke Doll in Red and Blue, when going to Lavender Town and the Ghost Tower, you can use the Poke Doll and more or less skip and glitch out the game so you don't actually have to battle the ghost itself, which is a really easy way to skip it and also a more humane main way to deal with this thing. In Celadon City, you can actually find an invisible PC. It's located there in the corner where you cannot see it, but if you interact with the corner side, you'll actually be able to, well, discover that there is a computer there which is interactable with that you can trade and switch your Pokemon it on. After getting HM Cut, you're actually able to use it to cut down tall grass. So normally this is something that people didn't really realize and it was a feature that kind of got overlooked by most people as it wasn't really clearly stated. But yes, you can actually use Cut to cut down the grass to make it easier to progress in certain areas if you don't want to buy a bunch of repels. Now, I can talk about Pokemon Red and Blue without including the Mew Truck. Now, the Mew Truck is something that's right next to the SSN. You have to do a sort of a little bit of a glitch to be able to access this area. But players back in the day used to actually think that Mew was located underneath this truck. And this is actually one of the things that propelled Pokemon into such popularity. The urban legend, the myth of the Mew under the truck caused people on playgrounds and around the world just in general to get excited and talk about. I want to even meet, read like magazines about how to get this mysterious Mew. And hence this kind of increased the popularity of Pokemon, just the thought of there being a secret mystery in it. There is an Easter egg reference to Mario and Wario games in specifically Pokemon Red and Blue. On Route 24, you can actually hear the same music being used for the games in this case. So there is a literal connection between the two right here, which is pretty awesome. So this goes outside the realm of Red and Blue, but it still is within Red and Blue. Now, in Charizard can specifically not learn the move Fly or the HM Fly in Pokemon Red and Blue. However, if you trade him to Yellow, he can then learn it there, and if then traded back, he will actually know how to use Fly in Pokemon Red and Blue. So yeah, if you just can find a person that you can trust, then you can get yourself a Charizard with Fly in Pokemon Red and Blue, which normally isn't possible. So there is actually a way to skip Brock in Generation 1. So you can just literally skip battling him, and to perform the glitch, the player must do the following. You open your menu and move the cursor to the save button without actually clicking it. Then you must walk in front of the youngster at the exit, the east exit of Pewter City, and close the dialogue with the B button, not the A button, and then immediately press start and save the game uh, when the cursor is frozen. So this will actually cause the game to just do this weird thing where when you reset it, the character, the youngster, will not walk you back to where you're supposed to walk back. He'll accidentally glitch you and send you into the next route, which will allow you to skip Brock's gym and go directly to Cerulean instead. If you have a Raichu and you go ahead and trade it to this man on Cinnabar Island, he will give you an electrode in return, and afterwards, he will then receive your Raichu and say the following. The Raichu you traded me, it went and evolved! Could this be a reference to a future plan Gorochu back in the day? Well, who actually knows? It is just an interesting little reference and possible hint towards an evolution. The Pokemon Diploma. So back in Red and Blue, this was the first time we actually got to see this. The Diploma was given to the players who actually were able to catch every single Pokemon in the game. And nowadays, they become more or less a staple in Pokemon, that if you complete your Pokedex, you get a Diploma. But back then, it was for catching all the Pokemon. You were able to battle Professor Oak back in Red and Blue. Now to do this, you did have to perform a Ditto glitch or also the Old Man glitch. Either one of those two would work, but if you did it, you would enable to actually battle Professor Oak, which is a thing that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And his team was actually pretty interesting. He normally had a level 66 Tauros, a 67 Executor, a 68 Arcanine, a level 70 Gyarados, and one of the Kanto starter Pokemon, the level 69, depending on of course which one you chose and which one your rival chose, the last one will be most likely the one that he uses. So kind of an 
interesting one and interesting that it was in the game but never officially usable so kind of an interesting glitch stand by me is an american movie and it's one that is referenced a lot of times within pokemon especially red and blue where if you go to the tvs there'll be literally a reference to it right there and this is because the creator of pokemon satoshi tajiri specifically has that as his favorite movie hence why we see references to it in pokemon in multiple ways then there is the bonus Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium. So if you play Pokemon Stadium and you defeat the Elite Four, there is a chance of you getting a bonus Pokemon. Now, these bonus Pokemon in particular are really good because some of them are unavailable in any other way besides this way for you to receive them. And then you can trade them over to Pokemon Red and Blue. And here is a list of the ones available like Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, which you can usually only get one of at a time. Item duplication glitches. Now, this is something that's existed in many Pokemon games. And even in Scarlet and Violet right now, there are multiple duplication glitches glitches and back in red and blue there was no difference in that you was able to do the same glitch to also get your hands on missing no and a bunch of stuff but specifically it was usable to get yourself 999 master balls which was every kid's biggest dream to have just an infinite supply of master balls and if you committed the glitch you were actually able to get them however if you want to learn the glitch i would recommend searching it up because it is a little bit complicated for me to explain right here it requires you to just fly to viridian do some weird surfing and eventually you're able to do the glitch now, at first, you might think this one is a bit confusing, but what are we talking about? Well, in Pokemon Stadium, which, yes, is in red and blue, you were actually able to do something very interesting, which is, if you had Pokemon red and blue, and you nicknamed Pokemon certain ways, you could actually affect the color of those Pokemon later on in Stadium if you traded them over there. And this is really freaking cool, because you were able to actually change the literal color of Pokemon, almost making them feel like they were shinies. As an example here, you can see what Venusaur looked like if you gave it a specific sort of naming. Same thing for this Electabuzz, same thing for Vaporeon, and even the Elekid in this case. So there's a lot of possible ways you could do this, but it's really interesting and cool. And you can actually look up a whole spreadsheet that explains how this all works. And now you can get specific colors on specific Pokemon that you really, really want to. So kind of an interesting mechanic. I wish they would bring this back, to be frankly honest. And finally, we have the Fight Safari Zone Pokemon trick or glitch, whatever you really want to call it. But this is back in red and blue. And to actually do this, you have to do the following. You've got to enter and exit the Safari Zone, then go to Route 20 without traveling through any areas to contain wild Pokemon on land. And then finally surfing along the east coast of any island on the route. And this is most commonly done by actually flying from Fuja City and directly to Cinnabar Island. Then surfing on the island near east coastlines, which is considered part of Route 20. The glitch can then also be performed using it in the east coast of the Seafoam Islands, and there's no land, basically where there are no land or wild Pokemon on Route 19 in between there is also possible. So when this is performed, the wild Pokemon that appear while surfing will not be the usual water encounters that you would see on Route 20, but instead you will actually be encountering Pokemon from the Safari Zone area, and yeah, this is pretty awesome. So if you want to just get yourself Pokemon from the Safari Zone without dealing with the, you know, annoyingness of having to go back in and out of the Safari Zone, there's an easy way to get that and just bypass the Safari Zone mechanic, just fully ignoring it, and also catching Pokemon in water, which is, um, you know, not the location they're supposed to be in. But yeah, that's pretty much it though, guys. And those are the facts for this video. If you guys 